Hi besties, my name is Angie. This is my channel, maybe I'll read today. We're doing a vlog. Hello. We're reading Gothicana by Rue Nix. Hello. I saw this book kind of like circulating certain parts of the TikToks and the bookstagrams. Nothing about it really intrigued me personally. Then I found out that the main character's name was Corvina Clem and that tickled me in such a way that I was like, yeah, I need to get my hands on this. So we're following two characters. One is our girl Corvina Clem. She's not like other girls. She's super goth and that's basically her entire personality. So she's, she's really giving it all. And then we're also following another character named Vad Deverall, who grew up in an orphanage that was run by a psychic witch, apparently. We've only met him very briefly, so there's not much to say about him, except that he's also equally spooky, ooky, schmooky, red flag, but make it sexy. So you know this is gonna be a time. So not to totally discredit this book, the cover is a, a touch mediocre. The end pages are great. This is beautiful. This is lovely. And as far as 15 pages go, that's kind of where my compliments stop. I would also like to just bring attention to the fact that each chapter has like a Pinterest mood board attached to the first page. Everything has like a picture, a quote. I gotta say the attention to detail is kind of immaculate. Oh, duh. Plot, right? 15 pages, things have surely happened. So we're following Corvina, her mom just died. So she's super isolated from her community, especially after her mom dies. And she gets this weird letter in the mail. And it's basically an invitation to go to this castle, this university called Varenmore. It's kind of giving a little bit Wednesday Adams, the Netflix show that I never watched. So I don't actually know if that's a good comparison. Since she has really nothing going for her, she accepts this invitation and she's going to the school where she will eventually meet Vad, who is an assistant professor there. Don't worry though, she's not a minor, she's actually 21 and so although it's still not HR appropriate to be dating your student, at least it's not fully illegal. So points for that. And as far as I've read, she has made it to the school. And then we go into a whole paragraph describing Corvina. And although this was a very short paragraph, this paragraph reminded me so much of that one like viral Harry Farter fanfic where her name was like Raven Demonia or something. But that was a joke. Question mark? I don't know if that was originally published in earnest or if it was just a thing that was created to make fun of fanfic. Unsure and unclear. But this, on the other hand, is obviously published in earnest. I have it in my hands. Here it is, and we're gonna read it together. Hi, it's been exactly 10 pages and I already have something mean to say. 24 pages in, Corvina is finally reached a school. She's met her roommate and we still haven't officially met Vad, but we have spoken about him a little bit because Jade, this new roommate, is actually technically not a first year student along with Corvina. She attended this university the year prior, but she ultimately left. She ran away, she dropped out, and now she's returning to try and start over. And the reason why she left is because her original roommate actually killed herself and she like witnessed a suicide and it was very traumatizing. So content warning for that. We basically learned that nobody really knows why this girl killed herself. People suspect that it had something to do with her secret relationship with Vad because apparently the school has no rules. The one rule is that you can't date professors. I would argue that's a pretty strict rule everywhere, but I digress. As they're talking, Corvina is unpacking her bags and she gets to a point where she is putting her underwear and her bras away. And the paragraph says, and I quote, bras and Corvina were not friends. Having grown up the way she had all alone with just her mother for company, bras had seemed necessary only once in a while. Panties she wore every day, except for when she just didn't want to. And I'm calling it now, I'm documenting it so that three days from now when I get to the scene, I can go on camera and be like, ha, I told you. Because there is gonna be a scene where Vad is gonna corner her into a room. She's gonna be like, I want to, but we can't because you're a professor, I'm a student. And he's gonna stick his hand up her skirt and he's gonna find out that she's not wearing panties. And he's gonna be like, oh ho ho, what the bad girl you are. I don't know why he has a shitty French accent. That's just the vibe that I'm getting from a guy named Vad, I guess. That's the scene. That's what that one paragraph is building up to. It's the same day. We just started this book. And I'm back. We're on page 68 now. They have met. Their first interaction with each other, Vad was hanging out playing the piano and she overheard and she went to investigate and his first words to her were, and I quote, whoever the fuck you are, walk away from here. And her response to that was, oh my God, his voice is so rough but dulcet and heavy and whatever. Girl, please get up. Girl. 
No. Like, I know this is the tone of the book. I knew it was gonna upset me, but oh my God, it's so upsetting. It kind of time jumped to a couple of weeks. And so they have been like making eyes across the classroom. They have been like seeing each other on campus. They have been like, whatever. And they finally had like something of a confrontation where he said, Corvina, stay after class. And instead of like saying anything, they kind of just stared at each other for like 10 minutes until she said, um, so why exactly did you call me after class? And then he has this whole spiel about like how he's dangerous. So I picked up the camera because I, I needed to share this one line with you. He says, you might be a luring siren, but I'm no ordinary sailor. I'm a mad pirate and I'm trying to resist your call. If I land on your shores, I will plunder and take away everything worth having. Be very careful giving me those eyes. Runix, be so serious. There's also an added mystery to this whole book because of course there has to be some semblance of a plot where this university holds a masquerade ball every five years and coincidentally every five years a person goes missing during this ball and instead of just shutting down this ball they're just like wow weird coincidence and then also apparently people get lost in the woods all the time and the only person who seems to be able to navigate the woods is Vad, and he is always the last person seen with a person who eventually gets lost in the woods. And I'm not sure how no one else has made that connection. Where is the administrative board? And also, on top of that, all the professors in this school are super lecherous. It's not just Vad and his obsession with this little crow. There's also like a psych professor who is like super like making eyes at the 18 year olds. Where's the board? Where's HR? Why do you exclusively hire groomers and manipulators and abusers? Why is that part of the criteria when you're hiring professors here? I don't understand. I don't get it. Where's the background checks? <laughs> Where's the reference calls? This is unbelievable. I have to take a break from this book. I'm gonna read something else tonight. I like, I literally cannot do it. See you. <laughs> We're back. I'm gonna be so real with you. I don't ever feel compelled to do an update because something like plot worthy happened and I wanna share that with you. The only time I feel compelled to get on camera is when I read something that is so distressing and so cringy that I have to like physically step away from the book and then I get to process on camera. I figured that's content. That's entertainment. And now here we are. Before we get into what made me need to step away from everything in my life, I did want to bring attention to the fact that I was right. I already included it as like a b-roll clip, but just in case if you missed it, page 90, no panties line. Really excited about that one. Anyways, I'm currently on page 145. They're in the middle of having sex for the first time. She's wearing underwear this time, in case you were curious. But Rue Nix decided to use the word engorged to describe a nipple. And I was like, that doesn't feel like those two words come together. I feel like we usually use engorged for like another body part. So that really distressed me. And so that's why we're here. As far as plot goes, there's no plot. The way that this is written is that we're supposed to go through this book with the assumption that there's a lot of charisma, there's a lot of tension, but also the way that this book is written is that there's a lot of time jumps. They're like, what, a couple of months into the semester and it's supposed to be like, oh, they've been drawn together this whole time. And all we've really seen is them kiss in a library and then she's in his class taking notes. That's the magneticism that we're experiencing. I don't know if that's a word, but the way that it's written is supposed to imply that they've been drawn, that they can't stay away from one another, that they have to be together. And we're just like not seeing that besides when they explicitly say, I can't stay away from you. And it's like, but you've done a pretty good job for most of the semester, so keep at it. Is there anything else that has happened in the last 100 pages though? Oh, that's something. Rue Nix writes college as if it's a boarding school, as if each class ends with a school bell. So I, I can't help but feel that this book was supposed to be about a minor having a relationship with their grown adult teacher and then Runix decided to have something of a conscious and just aged up everyone without aging up the setting and the environment. Because it doesn't make any sense for a college to have students between the ages of 18 to 21 be restricted and be essentially trapped on the campus. The only way they can leave the school is with a chaperone. 
That's kind of buck wild. That's ultimately in place so that Corvina gets to go to town with Vad. They finish their errands and they're driving back to school and there's a really bad storm happening and they're just like, oh shit, we can't make it. We have to spend the night in the car together. Thus the car hookup, thus the engorged nipple. And now I caught you up. Hey, this feels a little cursed because I don't have my glasses on. I'm about to clean up my eyebrows. And I have the audiobook for Gothicana, so I was like, oh, let me like listen to it a little bit while I do my eyebrows. And I went to pick up the book to see what chapter I'm on, and I flipped open to a random page, and the first four words that I saw were magic eyes, magic pussy, and I just want to leave that here for you. I want to do a quick little haul. I went to my favorite coffee shop and they have like a little free library and I came across this book. I don't know anything about it. I don't know anything about this author. It's called The Hologram for the King. It's by Dave Eggers. This like hardcover is kind of like super sick. It's like all etched in. It's all shiny and like cool looking. So this is my haul. If anyone has ever heard of this book, drop a comment. Tell me if this was a good haul or not. So back to our friend of me, Gothicana. I think we discussed this briefly in the beginning that the school does like a masquerade ball every five years and every year someone goes missing and that just like does not deter the staff from holding this ball or investigating at all. So that's like a thing and it's also connected to this larger like urban legend called the Slayers where basically a group of these students at the school would go into the neighboring village, kidnap a person and torture and kill them for like laughs and giggles. And then when they were caught, the villagers rounded up these slayers and killed them in retaliation. And so that's part of the curse. And they say that that's the reason why someone goes missing every year. It's like retribution either for the villagers or for the slayers. I'm not really sure who's in charge of the missing people in the universe of this urban legend. But one of these parties has laid down a curse and that's why people are going missing. And it's actually going missing and or dies. And the reason I bring that up is because our girl Corvina, she was part of this friend group Group. And part of the friend group was this guy named Troy. The spirits, if it's due to spirits, did target Troy and they possessed him and he did kill himself. So content warning for more suicide if you do pick up this book for whatever reason. And Troy had an older brother named Ajax. Ajax is apparently an investigator with like an international organization. And so he comes by to collect his brother's body and he's like, I'm gonna get to the bottom of this. That eventually opens up a can of worms where where we find out that Vad is not an orphan the way that every other student in this university is, but he's actually the inheritor of the university. His grandfather owned the school. Not only did he own the school, but his grandfather was part of the Slayers. And I don't know why that's significant, but it is. And basically when that gets revealed, Corvina gets very afraid of Vad and she tries to run away from him. And I kid you not, he grabs her by the neck and slams her against the wall. The author uses the word slam. So I guess she did have reason to be afraid, but instead she finds that kind of sexy. Since then, Vad has spun a tale that reassures Corvina that he's not evil and that he can be trusted. Two things I'll say before I, I drop you off until the next update. I had a Gothicana dream and it wasn't like sexy or explicit or anything like that. I actually don't remember any of the details of the dream. Only thing I remember from this dream is that I looked down, I recognized this outfit as an outfit that was featured in the book. I was like, I'm not doing this, I'm outie. And I woke myself up. So I don't even know where that dream was gonna lead. I don't know what was gonna happen. I don't know what had happened. I just looked down and I said, absolutely not. And I dipped. But the second thing that I wanna mention, I already forgot. This wasn't it, but I do just wanna put it out there. I know far too much about Corvina's nipples. Like this author hyper fixates on the status of this girl's nipples, whether they're pebbled or engorged or sharp. Like she just, she just can't get enough of this girly's nipples. It's buck wild to me. I can tell you more about this girly's nipples than about like anything else in this book.
Hi. It's a beautiful day today because today we're wrapping up this vlog, baby. We finished Gothicana, if that's not clear. I meant to do an update yesterday, but I was so busy going to see Kung Fu Panda 4. So I don't really remember where we left off in the last update, but the last 100 pages takes place during the masquerade ball. The same masquerade ball that all of the students have spent 200 pages talking about how scared they are to attend this ball. It's the night of the ball and suddenly everyone's fears just disappear and everyone is just super stoked about going to this ball. And it's just like a buck wild tonal shift because I cannot stress enough how in the first 200 pages, everyone was terrified of this ball but it's the night of the ball everyone has their masks on Corvina finds Vad they start making out in a dark corner and then something happens with the music like the way it's described it's almost as if like there is a spell in the music playing but everyone suddenly gets super horny and there's like an orgy in the middle of the ballroom which is random for a lot of reasons <laughs> but it's especially random given the fact that this school has such a strict rule of students not interacting with teachers and now you're creating a situation where teachers and students are both masked and now there's just like an open orgy what do you think is gonna happen nobody knows who anybody is and none of the staff none of the teachers none of the board members step in to stop this from happening they're just kind of like yeah party so like that's really weird on the school's end another weird thing that i can't stress enough is that there is a child who goes missing every single time this ball happens and during the ball there is no heightened security there are no measures to be taken place to make sure no one gets disappeared they're just like kind of resigned to the fact that they are going to miss a student by the end of the day and of course Course, that's exactly what happens two girls go missing and the staff are like surprised this happens every year so overall was it a good book no the mystery almost had me that was really what was like bringing me towards the book and that's what i kind of hate about dark romances like this because they always have a little mystery and i, I always get caught on the mystery and i want to know what's going on and then i just have to endure all of the abusive relationship stuff just so i can find out what's happening to these missing kids unfortunately in this book in particular it wasn't fleshed out really well it wasn't explained and it wasn't wrapped up in a very well manner So overall disappointed, probably gonna give it no rating because I just don't feel like it. And as far as the relationship goes, I hate it. The grossest part about this relationship is how all of that is framed in a way that's supposed to be very romantic and desirable. It makes me feel like so old and so big sister, but it's just like overall very concerning for me that this is like becoming the more popular framework as far as romance goes. And to be honest, I don't think it's a new phenomenon. For example, this book references Jane Eyre like 30 times, and that's very much how the relationship in that book was and that book was written in the 1800s and so it's like 200 odd years later we're still doing the same thing i feel like i had more points to make about this book but i also don't feel like talking about it for much longer so that's that thanks so much for watching i hope you enjoyed this video i hope you have a great day and i'll see you in the next one